I'm Benny. I'm Go. Um, as you know, we're the mixologists. Um, today, we're just going to give you like a little flavour of what we do, like a little bit of what we do in the clubs, um, what a lot of you might sort of know us from in the competitions, the DMC. Um, stuff that we've done a couple of years ago and stuff. Yeah, as well. like some of our favourite routines that we've sort of been doing, um, not just in DMC, but like showcases that we really like. And um, st just like what we do on the turntables, kind of a general kind of a bit everything, really. Um, excuse my colour. I fell asleep in the sun yesterday. So I'm not embarrassed talking here, but I'm just quite red. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to just start off with like a little um, kind of... At the moment, what we do when we, first, when we start any show, for the last couple of months, um, a friend of mine produced a beat, and um, it's kind of like, a, we always have like an intro beat that we always come on when we first start our shows and we scratch over. Um, and at the moment, it's this particular beat, and we've just kind of done a little special with it where we've kind of tailored each, um, each club we're playing to. When we get a chance in the studio, we just sort of change the name of where we're playing. And um, so it's like a special intro for each place we're playing. Um, so obviously, it's one for Cape Town. So you'll hear it, and we'll, we'll play it, actually I haven't even loaded it, but it's, we play it off CD because obviously there's, there's no vinyl of it yet. Um, and this is how we start our show normally, and it's like a scratching sort of thing, just like a question and answer scratch between the two of us. <laughs> that's not, uh, that's not as meant. Um, yeah, we plugged something into the wrong lead. But anyway, um, that's kind of like a little, um, little taste of kind of what we do. We use a lot of kind of really different sorts of sounds, um, like just influences what we've sort of grown up with. So there's like drum and bass sounds and like hip hop things and just some weird shit too, you know, that we like. And we sort of build routines with. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's like kind of like, our, like I said, our rough sort of team, a team sort of routine as such, what we would kind of. Make, make a bit more complicated for, say, a battle and stuff, man, so... Um, we're battling as well, like, the fashion changes a lot. Like, one year, the shit that you're doing can be really dope. Next year, everyone else is on something completely different. It's like, yeah, that shit's whack and all that lot. But it's just like a process of discovery, really. Like, people are finding new techniques all the time. And the technique that's hot that year is the one that everyone's kind of be, like, yeah, that's really good and stuff. You know? Yeah, and what we sort of tend to do, we just kind of... Um, when we was practicing for battles, we would just like practice and like if something sounded good to us, we would just be like, you know what, fuck it, we're going to do it anyway, you know, because like being in London, there were so many different sorts of music that we were sort of influenced by and, and, and listened to and like not just hip hop and, and not just drum and bass, you know, there'd be like, you know, you know dance or reggae bits with like garage or some two step or some broken beat or... Broken beats the lick, isn't it? Yeah, or just, yeah, just like so much different like music, like some rock stuff or some some guitar shit, and we just try and put that in the routines too. Um, not all of it was shown sort of there, because that's only like a little snippet, but um, yeah, as long as you're on your own sort of tip, you know, and you do your own sort of flavour, then that's all that really matters. You know, it's the worst thing is when DJs sort of step up and you've seen someone else do it like five times before, and it's just like, it's technically the DJ might be good, they can sort of pull that, that off, you know, but it's just a little tiresome to, to hear, you know, someone that you know is not quite their own sort of thing, and... I mean, hopefully, to a certain extent, we... Yeah, I mean, it's cool to learn techniques and stuff, but a lot of people just regurgitate the same shit that's been done before. And that's kind of weak. But, um, so as well as, like, the team stuff, um, we also have, like, a single routine each, which is also, like, one of our little personal favourites each, like, um, that we like to do. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, so, yeah, it's just, like, we, we've been... T like, like, like that team routine, we've got like a solo routine each that we kind of really like and we just sort of like to mess about with. We always like to show it off at, uh, at shows. Um, and um, yeah, so we'll just show you that like an individual like kind of uh, scratch routine as well or juggle routine. Um, and this is goes. Um, so that's um, like a little solo routine each. What um, guys that watch the videos and see people at DMC or go to DMC, that's kind of what they do on an individual basis. So yep. Is there um, like anything specific that you're, that you're better at than each other or do you do basically just split it up equally? Or, uh, um, yeah, we, we kind of know our strengths. We kind of know our strengths and weaknesses, you know what I mean? So and what are they? Uh, 
What are, um, what are they? Yeah. Secret, <laughs> man. Come on. <laughs> Goes the king weed smoker. <laughs> I used to be. Yeah. Um, we just, you know, it kind of naturally happens these days that like um, we'll be doing something and like if one of us can't quite do it and the other person can, they'll be like, let me try it. And if it works out better, that person can. It's like, cool, that's your part. Um, and if it works out that guy can do it better than me on one thing, it's like, cool, that'll be your part, and, I, and I'll come up with something different. Um, so yeah, we, we do have like strengths and weaknesses, but it kind of naturally sort of filters out when we're doing the routines and stuff, man. So. I'm not very natural, but I love it, so, you know. <laughs> Joke. Um, yeah, anything else before we do a little something else? Cool. Um, can you do the fourth thing? What? what, what? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, well, what we're into at the moment is like mixing in the clubs and stuff, and like, we're just going to show you what we do when there's four decks, like, what you can do. Yeah, what? what just real what, minor, you know. What? What we sort of do, because like, when we play out four turntables, we like to um, we, we like to do it like a little bit um, a little bit different, and make sure we kind of um, do something which is entertaining as well as not just playing records like I play two and then go play two. That's, we do that sometimes, but also um, we like to sort of mess about with it a bit when we're both sort of playing together and stuff. Um, and what we're just going to do now is just like this is it's not hip hop. It's a drum and bass sort of thing that we might do on drum, with a drum and bass show, and we kind of worked it out. Um, and normally we'll do it in the mix, so it's not quite mixed in, but we did like a rough lev level check. Um, so it, it, normally it's like whilst you're in the mix, we'll be mixing all these sounds. So we'll just play you the sounds that are going to come out, um, and we'll explain to you kind of what we're sort of going to do and what we would do at the show, and then we'll sort of hopefully do it. Um, okay, so the beat that we're, we're going to... I'll play you just roughly the beat so you know what everything sort of is individually, and then you'll kind of hear what we'll, we'll yeah, do to, together. Days, yeah, but some people, yeah, some people might not know. And, and so on, and then <laughs> and we just playing the sounds so they understand what sounds we're using and stuff. That's one. Okay, and then this is. Okay, and this is a. Uh, this is how it might sort of sound all together. Cool. Um, so that kind of gets from like one track that we're playing to like the next track, which was that one that I heard with the, the crazy bass. Um, we're doing a little kind of, uh, what we call it is like teases. These are like tracks in the drum and bass scene that everyone kind of knows them. So um, we kind of drop the little parts of the track that people know but we mix it over the top and then drop the next track and because we do on four turntables we can move it real quick so whilst goes mixing I'm mixing my two as well so as soon as he's done I can get in with my my either teases or my scratching or my next record like really quick so um, one advantage is that we've got the scope to go and move between like the turntables and, and records really quickly and stuff which sometimes just give us an edge over a DJ that's playing on his own like however good he is like you can't beat when there's four decks and two DJs going and just throwing different ideas into it, you know? And like, it like, makes it easier, more fun to dance to, especially if you're pilling. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, uh, and when we do hip hop stuff, we do like a similar sort of thing in hip hop as well, where um, we're kind of, um, Use the four turntables, not just as like, like we say, the whole time as mix a record, mix a record, then hit, go and mix a record. You know, so there's times when that's, when that's nice, when the crowd just want to hear the record play. And like, so not the whole time are we always doing this during like a two hour set, because it would drive me pretty wild as well if the DJ just wouldn't let the record play and stuff, you know. So we kind of try and get the balance of, um, you know, giving them a little bit of what they want to see, um, uh, as well as just kind of mixing and let the party party, you know, because that's, uh, at the end of the day, that's what we want, people to go home kind of happy, you know, and there's, um, we sort of take what we can do in, in, the, in the battles, and we sort of move that into, like, our club sets and stuff. Um, sh yeah, sure. So do we just take little things that we really like, um, and people still dance to it and like it, so that the Missy Ellick track goes, got like a... So instead of hearing that, 
Go, go does a little something between the turntables and he'll just drop it. Drop in between, like, then he'll have a kick and I'll have a snare. Yeah, so I might take the kick um, of a record. I'll just take in any sort of kick. But it'll be the record that's currently sort of playing, so it'll be like a hip-hop tune. And at the right point, we'll look at each other, and I'll get a kick and we'll show you. Um, pass me a weapon. So, if you just like imagine this, it's, it's like in a club, you know, everything is just, you know, being played the, normally. And, then, you know. and uh, this isn't a record, obviously, but it's just like a sound. So, imagine this is the record playing, and then I'll catch the beat. <laughs> just a little, it kind of makes it kind of interesting, and it's fun for us as well, you know, because sometimes it just gets a little, we don't want to just always just mix records, we want to kind of be like, oh, let's mess about a little bit, you know, and it kind of gives us that little bit of like, yeah, that, you know, pull it off and it's dope. And a lot of stuff, like we'll be in the club and we, we've got sort of ways that we might like to link up between the two turn, sets of turntables and we just sort of have a little freestyle when we're playing out and if we do something that works really well, we sort of be like, yeah, that was dope, let's try that at the next show. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, any questions up till now? About any of that? Somebody. Somebody <laughs> asked something, man. <laughs> no, no. How do we set everything up? Um, just the same way you would set up any sort of turntables into a mixer. So just um, just a regular turntable into both line channels, uh, sorry, phono channels, and then exactly the same on that side. And then we just normally have two outputs to like the, the PA. So. Not normally, no. We normally try and get two outs. If there's another mix, if there's not two outs to the PA, we'll, we'll run it through a, another mixer in the club. Um, and then the turntable, which is uh, we normally run into, like either line, so a line, so we can go between turntable and CD, or um, other way around, vice versa, or whatever, on, on either side. And we just, if we don't have two CDs, we just swap it. We've been like sort of making beats for the last sort of couple of years, but it's really hard to put all your energies into like sort of what we do battling wise and then in the clubs um, as well as spending loads of time in the studio so now the balance is sort of cool is starting Benny's to being real modest here he's making some killer killer hip hop beats at the moment and stuff and I'm really into my drum and bass where I've got some guy that's helping me engineer and just it's kind of like a step do you know what I mean because you use the battling to get your name out there then you're playing the clubs then the next step is really just to make records and stuff and I think that's the same with just about every battle DJ out there apart from like the people right at the top like Cuba who will just scratch you know and you can live off that, but it's just like a progression, you know? Yeah, and we, like, we both really enjoy it. We're going to do some collaborations with sort of some hip-hop people and some drum and bass producers and, you know, get those bubbling. Um, and then, yeah, w when it's right, you know, we, we don't want to just put something out for the sake of... We just recently put out, like, a, a mix album, which is out on DMC. It was just like a mixed compilation of, like, tracks that got licensed. Um, and that, that's all just on CD format only, so it's like a DJ mix from us. Um, but um, our own production is, yeah, when it's sort of ready, you know, we want to make sure that it comes out and it's just like, people are like, yo, that's dope, you know, not just like, you know, because a lot of people, like, you know, people do ask us, like, when we're putting stuff out, or we've got stuff, and because of that, we want to make sure that it is pretty, pretty damn good, you know, so. But it, it, we love it, like, being in the studio and, like, being that side of creative in that way is as fun um, and enjoyable as being creative on a turntable, so. Um, just trying to find a way that you don't have to sleep and then you can just be up 24 hours and just do what you love all the time, you know? But unfortunately, I have to sleep. You know, like that. Um, we, we was going to do a, a couple of things. We was going to, I don't know, just tell us like, if, you, if you're, you're up, you want to or not, but we was going to show you a few like, techniques. I don't know if people really want to know about specific scratching. We don't have to because it might be a bit like... A little, little bit, bit geeky and a bit boring, but if there's like, anything like, you know, if you want to learn how to drum or kind of... But Benny's good at transforming and like you know flares and maybe we'll show you just like um, like a few techniques, nothing that will send you to sleep, um, hopefully, <laughs> and um, just a few things just to sort of get an idea of like you know what what basic techniques you can do sort of scratching wise. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll show you drumming. Go, we'll show you drumming first. What it is is like a lot of turntable routines, like say within team stuff. Anyway, it was foundation. Like you know, you'd always have one turntable which might be like the drums. One turntable might be the bass line, just like a track. The other turntable might be like the melody part, um, and so on. You can break it down into however you want to and however many people you've got on your team. And so the foundation of like a lot of like turntable music and tracks and stuff is like a kick and a snare and a hi hat or whatever. Um, 
And so, yeah, it's gold to show you sort of some basic sort of dr drumming techniques. Yeah. Dope. <laughs> So really, it's up to like the, the DJ himself, like what kind of rhythm you want to drum in, and and then like then you can do some scratching over. The, or maybe I'll just do some cuts over the top of like a drum. We'll show how we might just sort of mess about and do a few different drum patterns, and then I'll, I'll break down a few cuts for you and stuff. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Yeah. is going crazy there like he's a lot of double time transforming and orbits and stuff like that uh, show him double times double time transforming maybe we showed something like, okay. like baby just some basic oh. sort of stuff so we'll get onto that in a bit but maybe we just like a basic basic scratch like the first scratch that um even if you guys don't scratch you, you do the scratch anyway you know it's like called the baby scratch you, you, do, it, you do it when you're like queuing up or say you're queuing up your record getting ready to sort of mix it in yeah, just literally that with no fader involved. It's just like the zuga zuga scratch, you know that. Um, so uh, and that like um, is like the foundation of a lot of the scratching. What? Um, uh, from, from baby scratching, you can. Um, I'll just quickly show you. Just by opening and closing the fader, you can just keep the baby scratch um, and make it like sort of more um, chopped up, which gives another sort of rhythm for it. And then taking that, you can. You guys might be wondering why we use our crossfader backwards. Um, it's just like a technique in scratching called a hamster scr scratching sort of technique, where you you scratch it with it reverse. So instead of how you would normally DJ by pushing the fader out that way in the sound playing, you push it push it away from you and it plays. And all the scratch mixers have the facility to sort of switch it around. But um, go to show you like the step after that, which is like chopping the sound, which is just. <laughs> the sound that we're, we're, that, we're, that was called chops, which is when you take the first part of this sound, which we're both using, um, and you just and you just like hit the first part of the sound. So you just hit like. That very initial, if you like, see the sound as like a waveform, just a very initial bit, and you just keep keep going. That was called chops. What go? But that's a little bit more sort of advanced um, um, than past the baby scratch. But f from the baby scratch, it's normally is like um, a scratch called a transformer. Which before go does, it, I'll just explain what what it is. And it's basically chopping one of the like the original scratch sounds that were a lot of DJs used, and it's um, chopping the sound into little pieces. So you let the sound play forward. And you chop it into like little segments with a fader, and then you can do it in reverse as well. So, um, okay, so I like. Variations. Yeah. Props to Ready D over there, the king of transforming. Yeah, my man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's like there's loads of like ways you can permutate and take it, but the basic is just like you take the sound and you just sort of split it into little bits forward and backwards, and then um, just do what you want. It's, it's scratching really for me. Like I, I don't sort of you know tend, like stand here and be like I'm like the master or anything, but like I just do what we like, you know, and what sounds good. Um, some techniques have just gone so like far. It's just 
but it just helps to know the certain techniques and that, because then you can piece together th the sounds that are in your head. Yeah. But, you know, if, if you, once you've got all the basics, like, you know, you've got your baby scratching, you're transforming, um, and in a little bit, we'll show you some of the others, sort of, a bit more complicated, like there's a crab scratch, which, um, which Go will show you. Which is basically just like... Click, clicking the fader with like all three fingers, so you 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 get like a kind of a crab walking sound, I suppose, you know. Um, and th and that's a popular, very popular scratch with a lot of DJs. It's quite, quite like a, a an easy but sounding really good s scratch to use. And for us, it's like once you've got all your scratches and what you want to learn, just this the kind of like how you collate them and put them in like an order. And you might drop into this and come back into like a transform and um, and then that's your style, you know, your style is like how you piece it all together and, um, and how you perform them, at, you know. Um, just exp explain what, yeah. So, Go just wants to show you the something called a, a one-click flare, which is um, basically the opposite of a transform. Um, and it's kind of complicated to actually explain, but... Um, Instead of having the, in, in rule, I don't know if, if you guys, because it took me a, like a long time to kind of w understand it, but instead of like chopping the sound with the fader off to start with, so it's off, and then the fader comes out so you hear the sound, and then back off so you don't hear the sound, the fader starts in the middle, so you, the very first sound you hear is the sound, and th if, if that makes sense, and then so you start with it on, off, on, instead of on, off, on, <laughs> off, off, on, on. <laughs> So you get that kind of like real wavy sound as opposed to just like a da 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 like a straight chop with a transformer kind of rolls up and down because you, you're hearing different parts of the same sound but given to you in a different sort of way. It's, I'm, not even, I don't even, I'm not even understanding what I'm saying now but I hope you get, sort of roughly get what we're sort of trying to say. But it's more like audible, you can hear like, it, it's just like, it was in, invented obviously by a DJ called Flair and um, it kind of semi-revolutionized like scratch techniques because um, you can do so many different things with it. Because it sounds really fast in between, you know, scratches that don't, don't sound too fast and then it just like gives you a little buzz when you hear it. You know? Yeah, it's like instead of going like, there's a flare like, it's like, instead of going duh, 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 it's like duh, 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 you know, and that's like, it's as easy to do as just like a straight chop once you get it, but put it in between the two and it's like, you know, it just adds to your sort of like repertoire and you know, what you can do and people are just taking that even further, like, further past that where, where we sort of learnt as well, so. Um, uh, does anyone want to just jump up and mess about a bit? And just for people that don't know, tw um, twiddle yeah, is, uh, is another scratch technique, which um, is basically when you twiddle your fingers like that on the crossfader. <laughs> and it gets the same sound as um, scratch called the two-click flare, which is similar to the flare. Just one second. Which is similar, which is a flare, but what we just sort of showed you, but you do it twice. So twice f flaring forwards, twice flaring backwards. And, it, and if you don't quite understand what the flare still is, um, it's the sound really. So go show you what, what it is. So it's that dubba 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 forward, dubba 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 like backwards, whereas if a single click phrase, dubba 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 like forward and backwards. I don't know if that's helping, but um, yeah. probably not. It's um, kind of like an illusion, right? Because you get the sound chopped um, in the middle rather than starting the sound like da 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 da. You're cutting the sounds in between, so you're hearing <laughs> exactly. you're hearing more sounds, you know? Yeah, but it, it is like it's sort of called an illusion. Well, not quite, but you know, it, it does give the impression that you're going real sort of fast, but you do have to have quite a lot, like, it's more technical scratch to do. If you guys have internet, there's a site called www.azasphonics.com that kind of break it all down with the graphs and stuff on it. Yeah, it's crazy, there's like, there's so many techniques now, you know, like, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it just, it, it goes over so many people's heads, people have taken new levels of like scratching, it's like, you know, it, it's a crazy art form in itself, you know, just like raw technique of, of scratching, like, DJ Cubert, for instance, is, you know, obviously pushing that. And um, it just depends where you want to take it. For us personally, we, we want to use it in a way that people can still, like, enjoy what we do inside a club or, like, 
and still appreciate what we can do skill-wise as well, you know. So um, we always like to make sure we're still up on it, you know, and still practice like when we can. But um, we're not so crazy on it that we used to be like we have to sit for like five hours a day at home and just make sure I learn like a specific scratch. Which um, yeah, when you're learning anything, you have to sort of like put that dedication and that, that time in. So um, yeah. At the moment, um, for me, for, I don't know about you, but for me, it's not at the moment, but one technique that was introduced quite recently, um, but I'm sure you know guys called Scratch Perverts, they, they yeah. brought um, a technique called um, feedback. You, they just introduced a technique which so many people use in single routines and double routines um, where you just basically create a feedback loop within the mixer um, and what it does, it gives them crazy. I mean, if, if you guys have got like a... Two phono to quarry. It's Jack. I can show you. We actually don't have one. I don't know if you guys have got a two phono. Um, and, and, and what it does, um, you just take like an output where the mix will be coming from an output, and you you put it like into the, an input, and it just like makes a feedback loop. So you just you get a feedback sound, um, and you don't have to have any records to, to do it either. You can do it with with no record. So, um, and and you can also if you put it through a line, you can scratch with it as well. You can cut it. Um, and it's just a noise that your, your mixers are like making. And um, I'm sure the guys have got, um, got a lead and um, we'll show you that. And touching the EQs on your mixer can change the sound of it as well.